All right. Welcome back to the Contrarians and um, welcome, John. How are you doing? Yeah, doing great, Marco. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, you're welcome. So um, for any folks at home have noticed, we started this new series called Showcase. So Contrarian Showcase is where we invite some of the folks who participate in our panel discussions onto the showcase so you can get to know them a little bit better. They're just kind of fun, short, interesting um, interviews. So today I've got John as my guest. And John, you also have your own channel. And what what channel is that again? Let us Ooh, know. Yes, it's, it's called My Music Corner. Um, I was trying to come up with a creative name for it. And I just feel like, I don't know, this is like my little corner of the world. I don't, you know, my music corner, that sounds like a good, good name. So I don't know, it's kind of stuck with me for a while. So who knows? It may change again. So. Yeah, we have a lot of folks. Sorry. I was so yeah, my music corner just seemed like that ring and yeah, I'm stuck with it. So we'll see what happens. But we've got a lot of folks who, um, don't just talk about music. Do you talk about other things on your channel as well? I've been known to, uh, I think I've kind of given a, like a little bit of a, almost like a life testimony once. I think I've done a couple of other odd little things. Um, never actually, I've not done movies. Uh, I've done stuff with movies on other people's channels, but I've never actually tackled movies. I think, I think the only thing that may not have actually done with a, maybe more of a scenery kind of thing is I've done um, I've done videos where I, I went to Robert Johnson's different grave markers. If you, if you, for those, for those of you who like blues out there, uh, I, I happen to love blues and I, I made a pilgrimage a couple of times where I've gone to, there's three different markers for, uh, uh, from Robert Johnson uh, in different points of the Delta area and, uh, it was just cool to be able to go to those areas and, and visit them and just pay homage. So uh, after that, probably, yeah, I haven't really gone anything else past past music yet, but it, it could come. It could happen. You did a video on the Muppets, didn't you? Yes, yes. My, uh, my wife was actually my first guest on my, on my, uh, my channel. So we, the two of us sat here and we, uh, we had gone through the eight theatrical Muppet movies and we just said, okay, what's our top five Muppet movie songs? And so, and uh, yeah, that's kind of where, uh, yeah. So that was, that was probably a maybe non, non music related movie, more movie related, but yeah, it was, it's a lot of fun because both of us love the Muppets. So it was, I just thought, yeah, if I'm going to have a guest on my channel, I better have her on first. So, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I think she was mortified that I think about 300, we've had 300 views on the thing. But, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun watching the movies and actually, you know, making notes and actually say, okay, why do we like this song? Why do we like this song? And so forth and so on. And it's always fun to watch those movies anyway, because we, we both love them. So. so. And what, what made you decide to start your own channel and get your own voice out there? Well, I think a couple of uh, really what started it was um, it was just a way of um, being able to share a video of a song I had written. Um, I had recorded this video and it wound up. I just did like a demo version, it's just me, me and a guitar and I'm just strumming away. And it was but it was something I wrote like back in 1998. And uh, I just played the whole thing out. And I was surprised it was like seven minutes long. I was like, man, I, I, I think I'm just gonna. I, I had a name, a account name anyway. I thought, well, let's just, let's just put it out there. This way, I can share it with people if anybody wants to watch the video and critique the song or whatever, see what they think of it. You know, if it, if it speaks to them or whatever. And so I kind of started. That was like one of my first videos. I the other thing was like a, a digitized version of something I did when I was like ten, and <clears throat> it was like me speaking um, from memory. This kind of like uh it was like a it was kind of like a children's sermon i did for my first communion <laughs> thing at church when so uh and so and i just and i had this like really old tape recorder and i just i just kind of recited it into this tape recorder and we had this tape player and i had a buddy digitize it and then i thought well i'm gonna put it like a uh, <clears throat> uh like a slideshow behind it and i just had fun with that but uh 
you know, after that, then I after the Robert Johnson things, I think like the first real video I did was on the band Warlord. Um, it, they had just lost uh, their singer, or not their singer, their main writer, guitar player, uh, Bill Samus. And um, and I, I just like, you know, I, I'm just going to show off my stuff. Kind of do it, kind of do it, see a tranquility type of thing, you know, and and, and I just kind of showed off my stuff and kind of just showed my love for for the group and little by little I just kind of saw you know this is kind of fun I want to start doing more than then of course I got hooked I got I got in with you guys and I just started having I I saw how much fun there was to do with it so I was like you know let's see what comes up and go from there. <clears throat> what are your favorite artists and genres to discuss on your channel? You know. I most of the some of the things I've discussed have been just like maybe forgotten gems. Um, like I've I've talked about um, a comedy album that um, I've known since I was since I was a very little child. And again, when I'm five six years old and I'm listening to this thing and I'm memorizing the comedy routine and I'm reciting it to people, whether they wanted to hear me do it or not, was another story. But I. You know, but I wanted to show my appreciation for, for for Victor Bono. You know, nobody knows who Victor Bono is in 2022, so why not? Um, Adrian Smith and Project, you know, the Silver and Gold album. Nobody talks about that album. Maybe a good reason why, but I still like the album. So sometimes it's just stuff that people just don't talk about. Um, I'm a metalhead at, at heart, so I do like talking my metal. Um but I also like the blues and um, that's probably about all I've actually really tackled. At least I would feel comfortable tackling right at this point, but Hey, you never know. I could surprise somebody and talk, talk for an hour on Johnny Mathis. Uh, maybe not an hour. but Since we're the contrarians, what's something that you're very contrarian on? Oh, okay. So this one's, this one's, this one's a good one for me. Um, I there's a lot of guys that I've come across on the on you with y'all and uh, uh, there's a guy that you all seem to really really like and his name is Ronnie James Dio. I can honestly count on one hand each how many times I've actually listened to both Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules. I just don't reach for those. I've listened to them a couple times, but I've if I'm going to listen to Sabbath, I stick to the Aussie Sabbath. I don't, Theo's okay, but it's not something that I gravitate towards. When I got into, when I first heard Dio, it was Rainbow in the Dark. But what gravitated me to Dio was Vivian Campbell. So I, I like Dio more for Vivian Campbell more than I like it for Dio. So, you know, after Vivian left, and I, I wasn't really into what he was doing. Um, so yeah, that would that would probably be very contrarian because I know a lot of people love heaven and hell and love mob rules, but I, for me, they're just like yeah, they're okay. It's just but I don't gravitate to to that. No love for uh, Craig Goldie. Uh, well, yeah, okay, Craig Goldie, yeah, he's he's good, but he, again, I never followed his career much after you know with with what he was on. Um, he, he came after Sacred Heart. Craig Goldie, yes, was... Dream Evil, Dream Evil, it was. I think so. I, I had the, I had the album, and I thought it was again, it was okay. But Dio again was just not somebody I, I just didn't gravitate towards that. You know, I, I guess I just wasn't into the wizards and and rainbows and all the kind of stuff. You know, the kind of thing he sang about. I guess that really wasn't my thing. So I just didn't. You know, I, I'm growing. You know, in that time period, I was probably a bigger Wasp or Slayer or Metallica. You know, pre, you know, like Cliff Burton era Metallica or uh, maybe, you know, I was probably getting into Pantera by the late, you know, mid 90s and stuff like that. So I probably just gravitated more towards that and just didn't, you know, I just didn't, uh, didn't go to that. So, and you're, you're a fairly big Wasp fan. Is Wasp your favorite band? I would think so. Yeah. I, I if I was really going to be honest with it, I think, um, when I first heard that debut, I it, it was like a life changer to me. Uh, it just felt like where my mindset was and what I was hearing on that first album and subsequent albums, I just felt like, yeah, he's like tapping into my brain here. 
you know, until until like the mid '90s. That there's a long story that goes with that. But I kind of walked away from the band for a while, came back to them in the late, like around 2009, and picked back up with them. And of course, I have have loved them ever since. And next Friday, I'm supposed to see them in Atlanta. So I'm hoping nothing happens and nothing weird happens. You know, that I can I can go see the show and because I've missed out on them twice. Well, I didn't have a ticket the one time, but the ticket I got. The show got canceled before I could even get tickets. But the other the other time, I got I got up to got up to the, sh- the venue, and the yeah, the show was the show was canceled for uh, Chris Holmes having having had knee surgery and was still recovering. So I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> good thing I had Ozfest '97 that weekend. Otherwise, that weekend would have been for naught. But um, yeah, Wasp is probably my big band right now. That's they would probably be my favorite. Cool. So we know you love music. What's something we don't know about you? Uh, well, one thing, and it it is still kind of music related. Um, and I'll actually give you, I'll actually give you two things. Um, I actually got a special thanks on a CD once. I don't know. I don't know how how many people I've ever told this story to, but it was on this, this little CD here called, uh, you can't really see the band name. It's uh, the band, the band's called Becoming the Archetype. And they were, they were a kind of a, Opeth style, very thrashy, very technical, run, groove, uh, grind. There was like a bunch of different kind of styles that they threw in there. But they played here in Birmingham quite a number of times, and I got to know those guys pretty well. And uh, the venue that they played at, uh, I kind of kind of was like, a, I don't know. I don't know. I want to really say security, but I was also kind of like a mentor because it, it was to like a bunch of youth folks. And so, and, and I got this, and I got this loving little nickname called Johnny metal. And of course, when you look on this CD and the special thanks, you see uh, special thanks to possum, which was the, the guy who put the, who ran the venue and Johnny metal at this, and at the schma. So the, the schma was kind of a, uh, kind of a play on this, um, the, the Jewish term uh, Shema from the, from the book of Deuteronomy. So, um, and so we got, we both get a special thanks and I get the, I get the Johnny metal nickname and uh, Johnny metal was kind of a nickname that's has stuck with me with, uh, with some of those folks. Cause I'm still good friends with a lot of those, folks. but, but uh, uh, I think another thing that uh, if I was going to say something that maybe not a lot of people know about me is that I did a little do it yourself CD. <laughs> and this is just basically just demo stuff of stuff that I've recorded and written over the years um a short time i played in a band uh with the guy from the the possum guy actually i didn't write the songs but i played guitar on them and i i thought you know i'm gonna incorporate those four songs just for fun i don't i don't sell them i just give them to people and you know and and just let them have fun i called i called it reflections of my life because that's essentially what it was so very cool so i have some um this or that questions so just quick a or okay. B questions. So okay. you can uh, give me a one word answer or you can even explain why. Um, okay. Are you ready? Go for it. Okay. Fozzie or Gonzo? Ooh. Hmm. Well, since my since my humor tends to probably be a little bit more along the line of Fozzie, I'm going to have to go Fozzie. Nice. Any particular reason? <laughs> Well, oh yeah, the humor. I, sorry. Yeah, the humor. I, I I can be a bit of a cornball at times. So, um, thank you and thank you. <laughs> right on. Um, you're a wrestling fan too, right? As you, you can a, see by the one chair behind me. Were you a Hogan guy or a Flair guy? Hmm. Well, growing up in the Northeast, uh, I really didn't get to see a lot of of nwa stuff so i was probably i was probably on the hogan bandwagon for a little longer like by default uh, than i was uh you know until i moved till i moved a little further south and i actually got to see some wcw and, and nwa stuff so i probably i only had seen rick flair in the magazine so i knew of i knew of him but uh you know i don't know um i, I guess i would probably go hogan what about Hogan or Savage? Ooh, dude, that's a different <laughs> story there, butter. 
yeah no i was i no as soon as savage hit the hit the hit the hit the thing i was i was i was a big savage fan of course i also liked miss elizabeth quite a lot too yeah so nice Uh, and you're a pretty big kiss fan too Yep. Very cool. <laughs> Member of the Kiss Army. Yep. Would you yep. rather see a new studio album with the current lineup or a reunion? Not an album, but like, would you rather see the original lineup reunite for at least another show? Or would you rather see a new studio album with the current lineup? So you get a new album or you get a reunion of the original four. Which would you pick? Well, seeing as though the last time I saw the band was the original four back in 1997, I have not seen them in concert ever since. Um, I would rather see something with the original four. Um, I love Tom, I love Eric's drumming style. I think he's great. You know, Tommy Thayer's obviously a great player, but um, you know, the, the the original four were my heroes in in elementary school, so. I have to say anything with the original four has has to win out. And it has to be a complete band effort. It can't be just, you know, not like a like Dynasty where, you know, Peter's on the one song and that's it. You know, or Unmasked or again. You, you, I want a, I want a full band effort. Who do you have for the original four thrash metal bands? Pick one. The big four. Who was my who was my favorite of the yeah, four? Yeah, who's your your one out of the big four? Hmm. I was probably the bigger Slayer fan for the longer time, but I I think that has changed, and I would probably now say Megadeth. Okay, cool. I, I would probably say Megadeth because I think I feel like I like their stuff a lot more consistently. Yeah. Um, to this day, I still have never listened to Load and Reload, <laughs> believe it or not. And I've never listened to Saint Anger, and I've never listened to Lulu. So that's probably not a good – maybe nobody's listened to Lulu. Um, I don't know. Anthrax, after Sound of White Noise, I kind of got off the train. I've never listened to anything else by them. And really, even with Slayer, Divine Intervention was kind of like where I got off their train too. But Megadeth was probably about the only one I stayed consistently with, so – yeah, I'll say I'll say Megadeth. Okay, couple more quick random questions: Are you okay. Disney or Warner Brothers? Mm. I would probably say Warner Brothers. <laughs> Looney Tunes. Yeah, 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 that's all those. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Um, Pyromania or Slippery When Wet? Pyromania. Nice. Do you have um, um, for your collections? Do you have a Holy Grail, and do you own it for any collection? It doesn't even have to be music. Um, this was one of them. I wouldn't mind getting the other one. Nice, quiet, right? Very cool. And now, is that an is, autograph? No, this was just something written on the. Uh, this was just something written on the on the oh, sleeve okay. that, that that I had gotten. And no, gotcha. I wish I wish it was autograph. No, unfortunately, and this copy isn't really in great the best of shape didn't even have the ob strip or i don't even think it had the lyric sheet that came with it but uh in it in the covers in kind of rough shape but uh i would love i would absolutely love to have the first one but i am not about to pay an arm and a leg and half my kidney for for a copy of of an original first copy i've got the reissue but uh yeah i'd love to have that but no i that's probably that's probably the closest to a Holy Grail thing I would I, that I could think of off the top of my head. Did you see the Randy Rhodes documentary? Uh, the one that was on Netflix, I think it was, or Amazon Prime, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, I did. I did. There's a lot of early Quiet Riot photos and and footage and stuff like that, which was really cool. What did you think about that? I enjoyed it. Um, I I had gotten something a few years earlier from uh from a fella named uh, Ron Sobel. Um. Uh, He, a guy named Ron Sobel, who was he was a photographer for 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 Quiet Riot. Uh, he had released this book, and he also had a documentary that that went with it too. Nice. Um, I believe they are both now out of print, but I really enjoyed the heck out of this too. So any 
anytime I can see um, any kind of early footage like that with Randy is always is always really cool. Um, I, I'm I'm always I've always been a big Randy fan, so uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was I thought it was really good. Um, you know, I think I would like to see something Ozzy um, influenced or produced on Randy during his time with him. I think that would be pretty cool to see, but I don't know if we'll ever get. I think other than tribute, I don't know what else what what else we'll truly really get. Right. Um, All right. One more quick question, and then right. we'll. We'll see what you're doing in the future and where we can okay. get a hold of you. Yeah. Dark Crystal or Labyrinth? <laughs> okay. A confession here. I've actually never watched either of them yet. Wow. I, Those are I, big I, Jim Henson films. I, 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 you're right. But for some reason, I've always been more of a, like a, a true Muppet person. Not so much, you know, if it's strayed from like the, the, the usual Muppet stuff, I, for whatever reason, I just never, I just have never watched it. But it is on my list of things to do, and I know as a true, as a Jim Henson fan, I need to. Like, I haven't even watched all of Fraggle Rock yet. I've only watched a couple episodes of it. But, but I mean, that's kind of that's kind of where my 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 association lies. I'm more of a, a straight up Kermit, Fozzie, Miss Piggy, Muppet, more so than everything else Jim Henson got into. So, uh, sorry, y'all, I, I haven't watched either of them. Gotcha. Any plans for uh, my Muppet Corner in the future? <laughs> uh, right now, I'm right now. I'm kind of doing something with with Ryan. Uh, Ryan's Vinyl Destination, his channel. He he and I are doing. He and I and Davy Gallagher from uh, uh, from Davy's music. Cinema, Cinema Flicks. And music, Flicks. Cinema Flicks and Music Picks. God, music man, Picks I always yeah. screw that up. Sorry. I Davey. screwed it up when I interviewed him too. <laughs> I, I screwed up though. Anyway, so the three of us have been doing some something, some things together that's been Muppet and Jim Henson related. So, uh, uh, so probably I'll, I'll probably I'll probably let uh, let Ryan have fun with that. So, awesome. And where can we find you? And what do you got coming up? Well, uh, my music corner on on YouTube. Um, you can look my name up, John Clauser, on Facebook. Uh, Kid Johnny C at Twitter and uh, the Instagram. Uh, what else do I do? Um, that's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, my music corner. Um, right now, the only things I've got cooking. Um, I've 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 started doing a little panel thing with a couple of a uh, couple of guys that I I've met through the DDPY yoga or the DDP yoga program. Uh, that uh, also a couple of them live here in Alabama, and one lives up in actually lives up in your neck of the woods, up in Canada. Um, and uh, we uh we get together we've been talking rock and metal uh and we just call it the the north and south rock and metal connection so it's, it's a little bit of a long and diluted name but uh we just have a lot of fun we've been just talking about some different years and uh uh i lovingly i've given the nickname the metal dad so i'm like oh boy <laughs> thank you all for letting me know how old i am but uh it's fun you know those are those are shows I don't have to think about because we can talk about a certain year and I'm be like, yeah, I can go back to 19 blah, blah, blah and say, yeah, this is what I was listening to. You know, these are my stories from from those time periods. And they actually kind of like listening to me ramble on with some stories sometimes. So I'm like, oh, somebody finds them interesting. Hopefully some viewers will find it interesting, too. So. But other than that, uh, I don't really I, I know after I see Wasp next week. Um, there's going to be a couple of us getting together and we're going to talk about our shows, you know, what we, how our experiences were at each show, um, from different set lists to merch, to vibe of the, of the, uh, venue, different things like that. So, uh, and just see what we get from different perspectives. So. Very cool. Thanks, John. And that's my music corner on YouTube. And John, of course, is also a contributor on a lot of folks channels and our channel as well. So if you can, we, you know, we're all providing content for free here. John's doing an amazing job on his channel and he's been an amazing um, contributor to other channels. So go throw John's channel, my music corner, a like and subscribe. It's the least you can do. He's providing free content for everybody and he's an awesome dude and deserves all the support that he can get. And uh, we appreciate you very much, John. Thank you very much for your contributions and support. Thank you, Marco. Much appreciated, brother. And we'll see you next time. You got it.